Hello and welcome to today's edition of Talking to Biologists. Today we're in the uh, research laboratory of Dr. Margaret Docker from the Department of Biological Sciences. Uh, and tell me, Dr. Docker, when did you first become interested in the biological sciences? About midway through high school. It, uh, I was initially interested in history, but one day my dad and my biology, teacher, my biology teacher on the same day both said that if they had to do it over again, they'd be marine biologists. And I sort of thought, well, that sort of sounds neat, and that's what I went into initially. My undergraduate degree was in marine biology. And where did you do your undergraduate degree? At the University of Guelph in Ontario. You did marine biology in Guelph. <laughs> yes. But at the University of Guelph, they have a number of research stations on the East Coast that, that there's a fair amount of uh, field components along with the project. So what, what, uh, what organism did you work on when you were out on the East Coast? Um, mostly whelks that I was initially worked on. And a whelk is? A snail, type of snail that, that, that I was interested in looking at snails that, that were adapted to um, intertidal zones that were that, uh, very rough intertidal zones. And so what is their interesting adaptation? Is it uh, a salinity question or is it a temperature question? This was at the undergraduate level. All I saw was a larger foot size, that they had a bigger foot for holding on for in, the, in the rough areas. So maybe a turbulence kind of thing. And then where did you go on to do your graduate work? Where? At uh, the University of Guelph. I, I stayed on there that one of my professors was working on lampreys and I fell in love with lampreys and that's what I've been working on ever since. So here at the U of M you still work on lampreys? Yeah. yeah. And do we have a, a holding facility for lampreys or how do you work on lampreys in the middle of the continent? Well, we actually, first of all, there are three lamprey species that are native to Manitoba. We do have lampreys in Manitoba. They aren't just on the, the coasts. Mm -hmm. And we are, we, I, right now I'm only working with field collections of lampreys, but we're hoping by this coming summer to have lampreys in our holding facility. And uh, so the, the Department of Biological Sciences has a marine holding facility? These are freshwater, that, all, that the lampreys... Any of the lampreys I work on are, are freshwater, and they're, they're freshwater during their larval phase. All lampreys, even the sea lampreys, are freshwater during their larval phase. And so what eventually brought you here to the University of Manitoba? Uh, job. Job. <laughs> yep, yep. And, yeah, and I love it here now. I mean, I have to admit, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I have to admit when I first co was called for the interview here, I said I didn't want to move to Manitoba. But by the, when I came for the interview, I was totally sold. I love it here. So how long have you been here in Manitoba? Uh, three and a half years. And have you, uh, in those three and a half years, have you got out and seen uh, much of the province and where these three uh, species of lamprey live? I haven't gotten out too much. I have to say that when, within the first month that I was here, I was very lucky to be taken out fishing by Dr. Ken Stewart and Doug Watkinson, the two authors of Freshwater Fishes of Manitoba. We went out walleye and catfish fishing. I haven't seen any, any lampreys yet, but uh, I hope to. You hope to. And, and is it, um, what are your eventual goals here at the U of M in terms of lamprey research? My main interest that there's, of the three species that are found in Manitoba, there's two that are called paired species, that they're indistinguishable as larvae, but then at metamorphosis, that as larvae they look sort of like worm-like, they have, the eyes aren't visible yet, they just live in the, the substrate, filter feeding. And then at, at metamorphosis, when they transform into the adult phase, one becomes parasitic on fish, that's what we're more used to with lampreys, and one doesn't feed at all. And so that what I'm really interested in is, is the relationship between those two, whether they are indeed distinct species or whether they're just different feeding types of a, of a single species. So that's what I'm particularly interested in. So if it doesn't feed at all, where does it get its nutrients? It actually doesn't, it, it, it lives for six to eight months without feeding at all. It just lives off fat reserves. That they're really cute. I mean, we tend to think of lampreys as being kind of ugly, but they're really, these brook lampreys, they're really very cute, just a few inches long. They just metabolize their body reserves, and when they spawn, they're just these tiny little emaciated things. Well, it's kind of a, it's kind of a sad <laughs> picture for the, for the poor lampreys, but uh, I guess that's, that's what happens. And so um, if a student was interested in lampreys or marine biology in general, uh, you fell in love with it in Guelph. If a student in here in Manitoba, what would you, what sort of courses would you recommend they take in their second year? For marine biology or fish, fishery? Uh, yeah. Someone that's interested in sort of like you, you get yeah. turned on uh, to the interesting field of biology, uh, at, you know, in the first year, later high school. Uh, what sort of courses should they take in second year? Well, well, here with what we have, I mean, that the, the best thing to do would be to focus on some of the organismal courses, the Chordate zoology. Um, if you're interested in marine biology, the invertebrate course is very important because, I mean, I'm interested in fish, but obviously marine biology, there's a big invertebrate component as well. So that would be, um, 
certainly at the at the second year level, ecology would be important for a marine biology program, and then it certainly into the third and fourth year courses, all sorts of um, you know, evolution, a um, uh, couple of fish courses, other other courses as well. A lot to choose from. All right. Well, thank you very much, and that concludes today's episode of Talking to a Biology. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Docker, and uh, your lecture will begin now.